what is the book of Revelation really about? Have you ever read through it and saw the bowls and the trumpets and the beast and all these visions and are like, what is this book trying to tell me? Even though it is one of the richest books in the entire Bible, it can sometimes be the most daunting and confusing. Like, I don't know if you've ever struggled reading through it, but I've gone through it and said, God, what are you trying to say to me? Why is this even in the Bible? Because sometimes it doesn't make sense. Could it be that we're so focused on the trees that we're losing sight of the forest? In other words, there's big major themes in the book of Revelation that God is wanting us to see that we sometimes miss because we're so focused on all the details. This isn't to say that the details are irrelevant. There is so much to unpack in this entire book, but when I learned these five major themes that run through the entire book, I was able to really get something out of it and see, okay, this is what God is showing me overall. Yes, I can fine tune the details and go into the nitty gritty, but having these five concepts as an anchor point really helped me to start understanding the book a whole lot more. So what are are these five concepts, major themes that God shows us in the book of Revelation? Well, let's start together in Revelation 1 and 3, which tells us, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. The reason I start there is because it is the only book in the Bible that tells you if you read this book, God will bless you. And if you hear what the book is telling you, God will bless you. The Bible says all types of things about the blessings of God and understanding his commands and meditating on them and applying them. But the book of Revelation says if you read the book of Revelation and listen to what it's telling you, God will bless you. So wanting that blessing from God, again, I want to read the book of Revelation, but I don't want to be lost. So to help with that, let's walk through the five major themes. And on each one, I'm going to share with you what does God want us to know and what does God want us to do about this particular thing. So the first major theme of the book of Revelation is that number one, God is sovereign. In other words, he is in total control. He is greater than any leader, any government, any religion, any election. God is in control of time, the present, the past, the future. So he determines what will and what won't happen. So as you're reading and you're seeing these nations rising and nations coming and leaders coming up and all these changes in the world, and we hear about one world government, one world currency, when you start getting into that, God is trying to show you, I have planned this beforehand. I am in control. I know what's going to happen. It is going Going to unfold exactly as I desire. So what he wants us to do is to trust him. The Bible says he will work all things out for the good for those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. We should not be afraid from the book of Revelation. When we read a book that shows us that God himself, the one who loves us, is in complete control, it should not spark fear because of the unknown. It should spark trust in him because we know him. In other words, reading the book of Revelation has done the opposite to so many Christians than what it is intended to do. By showing you these things now that are going to happen later, God is not telling you to be afraid about what's going to happen. He is telling you that everything that happens in your world is in my hand. I'm in control of all of it and you don't have to worry about it. So we see as we read the book of Revelation, the sovereignty of God, and that is intended to spark trust and faith in our hearts towards God. The second major theme in the book of Revelation is Christ's return. In other words, Jesus is coming back. He came once to the earth as a human being, as a lamb, and was led to the slaughter. He died for our sins, but when he comes back, he is coming back as a lion, as a triumphant victor. He is coming back as the conqueror, as the ruler, as the king of kings, as the lord of lords. So what does he want us to do about this? He wants us, first of all, to endure what is going to happen, what is happening in our personal lives and in the world around us. In other words, as suffering gets worse, we are not to cave in or give in or quit. And the other aspect of this is to look forward with hope and expectation for the return of Christ, looking to that day where Christ is governing the world, looking to that day where he is on the throne. So as we read in Revelation about Jesus coming and destroying the Antichrist and the false prophet and establishing his throne on earth, that is supposed to encourage us to say, look what's coming. We are on the winning side. And whatever it takes between now and then to get there, we are willing to endure. And along those lines, the third concept that God is showing us throughout the book of Revelation is number three, that the devil loses. Jesus completely overthrows the Antichrist system. What's coming in the end times is not coming to stay. It is not the end all be all. It is a season that is going to take place 
on the earth, which if you're wondering when that season is in regards to the rapture, in other words, will you be here or not here for that time, be sure to check out the video on the end times laid out in chronological order, which I'll link to the end of this video. But as you're reading through the book of Revelation, God is trying to show you that this world system is going to end. It is not going to be the way things always are. And so what does God want us to do about this? He wants us to stay on the winning team, not allow ourselves to get deceived and also not allow ourselves to get caught up in the world system and to be swept away with all the madness and all the lies and all the conspiracies and all the fears and all the worries. Look, you are riding this thing out with Christ. He is in control and all you need to do is keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, not on this world around us. Now, the fourth big thing God is showing us in the book of Revelation is judgment. God will unleash his wrath on sin. The whole, if God is real, why does evil exist? If God's real, why do bad things happen? That is going to be dealt with. During the Old Testament, God looked towards Christ as the sacrifice for the sins, and so his patience endured, waiting for that time. Now, he is looking back on that sacrifice for the sins that are being committed now and enduring. But when those who have applied that sacrifice to their lives, accepted Jesus as their Savior, are taking out of here, the sin that is rampant on the earth will be judged. False religion, for example, will be destroyed. That is why the false prophet is thrown into the lake of fire. And so what does God want me to do now? First off is not fret about evil things and evil people and understand that God is being patient, but that doesn't mean that he's overlooking everything. On the flip side, it is for us to stay connected to Christ, to allow that sacrifice that he did on the cross to continuously apply itself to our lives, that we not be a part of the judgment that is to come. And then finally, the fifth major theme in the book of Revelation is hope. You see, God will create a new heaven. He will create a new earth. We will live with him in peace and in security. Those of us who died will rise and live with him forever. I know the majority of the chapters are designated to what's happening on earth and the Antichrist and all, but when you read the last few chapters, you see all this newness and goodness and Christ reigning and us being with him for all eternity and peace and a new Jerusalem. So what does God want you to do about this? He wants you to understand that this too will pass. We are going to someplace better. This world is not our home. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. And so in conclusion, I'll condense it down to you for a single sentence of each. What does God want me to know? And what does God want me to do? The book of Revelation is for us to know that since God is in control, he will return to defeat Satan, judge sin, and bring us to heaven. And what it encourages us to do is to accept him as our Lord and Savior and to never let him go no matter what. So thank you for watching. Be sure to check this video out to find out if you're going to be raptured out before or after the whole antichrist system and subscribe to the community if you haven't done so so we can catch each other in the next video together.